breast cancers because of also all the plastics that you're touching. Because sometimes the plastics with the chemicals reacts to and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Or like lung disease from inhaling it. But yeah, back to the hormones, I guess. So women's hormone cycles are like 28 days and men's are 24 hours, which is very different. So because of this, most medical trials are done with only male subjects because women's cycles could throw off the results because it's not stable. So they just don't test it with women. This is one that really bothers me. Yes. I've also heard it's because they thought, like, hormones were just a little too confusing. Like, it it was just a lot going on for them to look at. So they said, yeah, we're just going to not, we don't care. Right. Yeah, because there's the other, like, how hormones interact with each other because of whatever. Yeah, they think it's too confusing to deal with, so they just don't want any data at all on how it and affects women. I wonder women. why so many women struggle with infertility and oh, yeah. why yeah. we're not having kids. It's not like it's as easy to have a kid now as it was. Like, our fertility is so fucked. Right. I think it is all the chemicals, too, and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, air quality is going down. There's a lot more things that you're just constantly exposed to that could cause right. problems. And stress. And Yeah, stress. I didn't know anyway, in general, that chemicals are based on a one-time exposure. Neither like, did I. You're not typically exposed just... I mean, I guess in the workplace or something. But, like, I don't know. You think of cleaning the bathroom at home... You could use a couple different things. And, like, multiple... Some people clean multiple times per week. Like, right. Yeah. Or, like, most cleaners that come into your house are also women. Yeah. And, yeah, that's... Like, yeah, some people's job is literally to clean. Right. Think of how many chemicals they're interacting with. And also, like, cosmetics, like, that yes. kind of stuff also have chemicals in them that you're exposed to yeah and they say it's safe but like how much is safe safe. yeah yeah like you could be safe but if they're only thinking of one time think of all the makeup you put on every single day or all of the skincare that you use and add it all together right no one's just using that either like no one's just using their one product Right, you're using multiple products. They're using their three-in-one shampoo, (laughs) conditioner, body Uh, wash. Oh my god. If if you're using that, please stop. I don't know. It's just... It (laughs) does not... It's not good for your hair either. It builds up so much. Yeah, it's nasty. Just please use something else that'll make it so much better. Or like, I remember a couple people I've talked to said they only shampoo they have never used conditioner i was like just buy a conditioner and then later they were like wow my hair is so much better because i use conditioner now too i'm like where how are you guys surviving this i don't i will admit mark uses at least two in one no sydney don't let him i mean i have conditioner in there he could choose to use it but also he showers twice a day because he's a big stinky and i can't afford to we can't afford for him to use conditioner twice a day yeah i guess does i mean does he at least use like the um clarifying to get rid of build up no he should do that like isn't it once a week i've heard it depends on your hair type yeah he's pretty um not into that yeah well, less chemicals that you're yeah, exposed to, chemical. at least, I guess. So there's that. Because, yeah, shampoos and stuff, too. You don't even think about that. All the fragrances and... Yeah. Yeah. Fragrance. That's a huge one. Right. How much of that is mostly women using? A lot of it. Candles. Yeah. yeah. Lotion. I don't know right. many men who use scented lotion. Right. That's true. Yeah, you take a shower with your scented stuff, you use your body wash, you use your different shampoo conditioner, you yeah. put lotion on when you get out, you put your face Shaving stuff on. cream. And, like, it, when oh. men shave, they only cover part of their face. Some women yeah. coat their entire body in shaving cream. That's true. I'm sure that's not being tested either, if that's okay to be doing. I right. mean, some people use it, like, every other day. I mean, depends how fast you grow, too, but, like... yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah, it adds up for sure, and no one's looking at that. Yeah, because of, like, routine exclusion, there's also really no data on how to treat pregnant women for anything, which I think, I feel like I understand why pregnant women aren't being used. Yeah, I do get it. Yeah, but there is, like, literally no data. There's already very little data on how it affects women in general, and then you add the pregnancy in, and, like, literally anything, you don't really know how it affects pregnant women. That's so scary. Yeah. You know, like, the thalidomide situation that happened in, like, the 60s where they gave all these pregnant women this medication called thalidomide that was for... They used it for, like, morning sickness. It was, like, an anti-nausea. Yeah. And it caused, like, severe birth defects. Right. That was in the book. I always... Yeah. I always think about that when it comes to, like, drug safety... And, like, they did not acknowledge it for a long time, too. And acted right. like it was just something that happened. That's sad, too. See, it's often overlooked for so long, too. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it's hard to trust anything when I know now that women aren't really in the clinical trials. And then if I were to ever get pregnant, I don't think I would trust to take oh anything. Oh, my God, no. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess the prenatal, I would hope, is... Yeah, that's just by enough. Means. Right, yeah, yeah. Hopefully but you like... don't have any other medical things that come up. And then usually, right. if something does come up, the woman just has to suffer through it. Yeah. Until it's over. Right. Unless it's, like, dire or something, but... Yeah, usually it's... just deal with Nowadays, it. Nowadays, they probably still just... You find out you have <laughs> cancer, like, sorry. Right. Probably depends on the not... state. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so scary. But I don't know many women who would choose to treat their cancer over... You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think generally the consensus on that is, like, sacrifice, but... I think depends on the likelihood of the baby's survival still. Like, yeah. if you have, like... You just find out you have cancer and you're going to die in a month and you're only, like, two months pregnant? Like, I don't know about that. Like, right. <laughs> but, yeah, it depends on how severe and I don't know. So, drug t- trials for generic drugs are almost exclusively tested in young adult males. So, in phase one trials, women make up only about 22% of participants. <laughs> so, you don't really even know how drugs affect you. And according to the FDA, the second most common adverse drug reaction for women is that it just doesn't work, despite working as intended for the men. I feel like they still prescribe it. Like, they're just like, what what do you mean it doesn't work? Yeah, because what do you, would you have a lot of other options either? Right. I don't know. But I just think women just need to be more in these research trials, like... I don't understand why they're blaming the hormones and like body weight's so different, fat ratios are so different that affects all of it. Yeah, it's so different. Yeah. So I don't understand. When they know the second most common thing is that it just doesn't work for women and yet they're not doing anything to fix that. Right. I don't know. Makes me mad. So like the last thing I guess for safety or in general, I think. Um, This one really makes me mad because I had no idea and I was very surprised. But, like, how a car is designed and tested for safety. (laughs) Oh, I know this one's bad. Yeah. So, apparently women are 17% more likely to die in a car crash than men. And this is because of the safety. So, first... Women, on average, are shorter, so they have to sit closer to the wheel than men. So that puts you in a bad position already in the car, automatically. And because of this, like, that that position is not the standard seating position that's tested with crash test dummies because their standard is men. So they don't even, can't really even tell you what would happen if you're in that position closer to the wheel. But, like, women are more likely to have internal injuries on frontal collisions because you're so much closer to the impact. Yeah. 
And also like the angle of your hips and like your knees when you're in that position makes your legs more vulnerable to injuries. Another thing is in real rear in collisions, women have less muscle in their necks and upper torsos than men on average, which means women are up to three times more likely to experience whiplash. Mm. And modern seats are too firm. And because women typically weigh less than men, they're thrown forward more in the rear accidents. Oh. So that increases your likelihood, too, of whiplash or other serious injuries. Yeah. And, like, I think all of this is because of the crash test dummies that are used in car testing. So the most commonly used crash test dummy is five foot eight and weighs 167 pounds, which the average height and weight of a woman in the U.S. is five foot four and weighs 170. So like the weight seems good, I think, because the average person is overweight. Like I think that's a high right. weight for five four, but you're four inches shorter, so that's already not going to be accurate for the average woman and um crash test dummies have male muscle mass proportions and male spinal columns as well as male internal organ placements for damage like they don't even try to test that there's the uterus what happens in the yeah um in the 1980s researchers argued for the inclusion of female crash test dummies but this was ignored so, finally, in 2011, a female crash test dummy was finally included, which, when I think about that, I was driving before that. Yeah. Like, that's very recent to have. Yeah. That's crazy. But um, while they did include a female crash test dummy, this was really just a shrunken male dummy with still the male anatomy. <sighs> So you still don't have the female organs or the proper like muscle and fat ratios and all of that. And um, also the female one is only ever tested as a passenger. So if you are a female driver, you still have no data on what that will do. What the fuck? Yeah. And also, of course, there's no data on how pregnant women would fare in crashes because oh. there's no research on seatbelts. Yeah. yeah. Like, when you're pregnant, your seatbelt's not going to fit correctly because of where the seatbelt goes. Yeah. So there's no data on that at all of how you would do in a crash. Uh, <laughs> all of so, this just yeah. makes me not want to be alive. I Yeah, it just really makes me, like, so mad, but also, like, some, I mean, some of these do seem harder to fix than others but it's like why can't we just fix that right the fact that they said in the 80s like maybe we should include females and then they finally like it took them like 30 years they did it and they did it wrong yeah right the fact that they did it wrong that it's not even the right dummy at all and then they're only testing the incorrect dummy as a passenger as if women don't drive like right i don't know the whole thing makes me so mad you know what when that when that Y chromosome finally ceases to exist, who will be laughing then? I mean, that is going to happen. I know. Do you, do you think that's going to happen in our lifetime, too? No, I feel like it takes more... Yeah. More, um... Generations. Generations, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be crazy, though. And I think it'll be prolonged, too, because people are waiting to have kids yeah. until later in life. That's true. Yeah, it'll be interesting when that happens. Yeah. That's, I don't know, that's all I have. Do you want to add more or? Um, no, I feel like you got it all. I was going to tell a little anecdote about how nothing I work with is designed for me to use. Like, when I'm lifting corrugated sheets under a sample table, it has like a, a tall edge on the side that you have to go over to get the sheets on the table. Like, your table has oh. like, no edges but ours has like sides that come up that the hmm. gantry runs on so like yours is just open but ours has like kind of like edge protector so you can't get your fingers like into the part where it moves even though it's 
Oh. It's like instead of having the laser curtain, it just has edges. I guess it still does have the laser, but 